What is up, Slugger Squad? This is Drewby Glass. I'm here to welcome you to episode two of Playing With Glass. So on this episode, we get to do a really fun collab with a Seattle-based artist named Swan Glass. So he's known for his hydrants and his compact Klein recyclers all the way to his cool Volcano Sherlocks. Um, so we actually got super lucky and we get to play with some of his lace prep. Um, this prep is super cool. It looks like it's some blue stardust with a lot of UV mixed in too. Um, some really cool cane. We'll have a little close up of that. Uh, really excited to use the prep. It's mainly blue based. So I'm going to probably pair it with a cool, probably transparent blue color. Um, Swan's also a madman. He made a uh, Swan and Drooby little Millie Mib to put on the piece. We'll have a close up of that too, but I think it's so cool. Um, yeah, so we're gonna pretty much follow along this collab and uh, make a cool piece. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, let's go. Huge shout out to Swan Glass making this collab possible with this amazingly beautiful prep. Super sparkly. We're going to pair it with some ghost. I thought that was going to be a good color to accent the blue and make everything kind of pop a little bit more. So we're going to start out by doing a blowout of ghost. Just pretty much gathering it into a gigantic gather. poking a little hole and then we're just going to do a big old blowout. Getting her all nice and even. Getting her ready to sleeve up and get some nice prep out of her. I love it when the camera matches up with the lathe so it barely looks like the lathe is actually spinning. Woo! That's how to pulse a prep in like two seconds. <laughs> it takes a lot longer than that, actually. But pretty nice. Pretty nice. We got her done. Yep, one thing I'm really excited about this piece is just the seamless prep. It just looks so good when you use a huge chunk of prep. Just basically getting her ready to start shaping the bottom. Uh, his prep was very straight, so I didn't have to do a lot of uh, re-straightening. Sometimes, even after just, you know, sleeving something, things will get a little wonky, but absolutely beautiful. So, really just cleaning it up. Cleaning up the end, getting it ready to connect. I decided to go with... Uh, Agua Azul lip wraps on this one just to kind of give that extra little blue pop in certain places. I think it'll uh, I think it'll make it much better than no lip wraps on this one. Always measure. Measure baby. Pretty much just pulling apart some sections for uh, for the base. I think one is the booty and one is the top part of uh, the can that's going to get sucked in for the XO part. Right here I'm just pulling some some small stringers for lip wraps. But I love the ghost color. It, it is one of the coolest colors in glass I think. If, if you ever, so I used to do a lot of bubblers. A, mother load of bubblers probably like i don't even know i would do at least like 20 a day of just silver fume bubblers and yeah the best type of fume is if you can achieve that sort of milky blue at least in my opinion for just silver but whoo dang the ghost just does it for you <laughs> so you don't really even have to worry about it let's open her up Gonna get her ready. I 
Yeah, I like, uh, I started doing a different technique for my lip wraps, um, just to get them a little bit thicker, because I used to, I used to use a very, very small stringer, and I would, uh, just wrap it around once, maybe twice, and call it good, but, um, on these, especially because this is the bottom section, it gets blown out quite a bit, so you want to make it nice and chunky. So I just do a whole, basically a little coil pot. Then we're going to blow out the coil pot and make it nice and even. And then pop a little hole and get her flared. And that's going to make a real, real nice uh, little Encolmo looking lip wrap. Tiny little hole. Got to get in there. Whew, keep even in that baby out. But yeah, this is how you get all the crisp, crisp lines. You don't want to don't want to do a sloppy. Just got to make sure you get that nice and crisp the first time and make sure that you're on the same uh, same diameter as what you're connecting to. That way you don't have to do any improvisations on the fly because that's not very fun. Oh yeah, but when it matches up, that's so much fun. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. <clears throat> Basically, I'm going to do the same thing to this. Give Sophie a little pet ski. Just get this one prepped for the other side so that we could throw it on. And then once these are done, we're just going to start uh, shaping on the lathe, getting the main body made. Yeah, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. The, the shaping on this one went out very, very well. Shout out to Swan once again. Excellent prep, homie. Killed it. Real excited for these exos. I'm actually making a, a pretty worked one right now, so I'm excited to show that one off when it's finished. It's got a bunch of Millie on it and some gold ruby and, ooh, lots of facets. Facets all over the can and the base and the uh, funnel. And of course, the mouthpiece and joint. Yeah, we got some fun plans this summer. I hope you guys are doing doing some cool stuff. We're doing, uh, let's see, DFO's coming up. Uh, Natural Remedies Camp Out is coming up, too. That's going to be up here in Washington. Um, pretty much the homie Hetty Broker gets this really cool summer camp and just makes it like a Hetty Kid Haven. There's going to be glass shows. I'm doing a demo there, so I'll actually bring my torch set up and one of my small kilns and we we'll making some cool stuff in the forest. Um, but they have kayaking, they have a rock climbing wall. There's going to be a like hash infused dinner. Whew. Yeah, can't wait for that. That's going to be pretty fun. Ching, popping that whole open noise. Sophie being a menace, she was climbing all over the bench that day. She never really gets on the flame. She jumped on the kiln once when it was on, and she has not been near it since. Poor kitty. It's really sad. <laughs> Her little paws got charred a little bit. But yep. Yeah. If you're ever wondering what I'm listening to while I am working, it is a DJ called Ryan Celsius. Uh, Celsius, like Fahrenheit, Celsius. Um, <clears throat> and he pretty much takes old hip hop and like older songs in general and mixes it with new sort of EDM. But he does all the DJing himself and it's, it's very proper. If you want a vibe that makes you want to go fucking, I don't know take over the world and be a gangster <laughs> that's the that's the shit all right so here's gonna we're gonna start the initial shaping start with the booty gonna even everything out and then uh 
go right for that foot. I like to kind of start with the foot just so I can see at least on one end because you're closest to the bottom and see how the sizing is going to come out. And we're popping that other cap in on the front and then I can start making that bubble. So juicy. And with that made, we're going to start the perk. With the perk, I just really need a bunch of small tubing that's straight and then we're going to turn it into a little perk. I showed you on the last video um, the same exact build. So I know this might be a little redundant and I probably won't do another EXO video for quite a while, but I thought this Swan collab should be showcased. And I'll show a little bit of my, a little bit of the other steps that I didn't show in the last one. Ah, oh, I love the Infinity V. That's that little roller tool right there. Pretty much you get something hot, a little section you want to take off and the V shocks it with just enough to not uh, leave like scuzz and scum on the rim where you cut it. And it just makes a clean, clean pop. So you can just flare that stuff open after cutting it. Beautiful. Yeah, perk is probably one of the most important pieces to a piece because of, I mean, it controls the whole function. If you have a bad perk, it kind of makes the piece, you know, pretty unusable. <laughs> so I'm putting a little bridge that's going to go inside of my perk. And that's going to hold that center tube in place. And it happens pretty quick here on the lathe. You see me pop a hole, put it in, weld it in, and then I'm actually working the other side of that tube. Sealing it to that inside tube and doing the other to the other side. Then you have this cool little perk with a drain chamber going right through the middle. Going to open up all those holes now and get them ready to go inside the piece. Don't forget one of the most important things about doing perks that are going in the bottom of pieces is measure that bitch. Gotta make sure it's measured. Because if you make a perk and it doesn't fit, that's like, ooh. Gotta do some readjustments and make it happen, but yeah, usually it's much better to just make it fit right the first time. Then you have no problems moving forward. So these are the drain holes on the bottom of the tube. This is where the water will come back in through the funnel and get sucked back into the percolation. Shing, make sure it's straight and make sure she fits. Fit very beautifully on this one. Sometimes they get a little tight, but when you have that just enough space, probably like I'm saying like two or one or two millimeters in between the side wall and the perk. Oh, that's such an easy tag. That's so nice. I do remember this prep being a little bit thicker um, than what I'm normally used to, but it worked out just fine. All right, getting that bad boy. Putting the lathe, getting ready to put the perk in. On this one, since the prep was, it's all pretty random. Uh, I didn't really have to do much alignment to line up patterns or anything. So we just get to put her in, find the best, the best front, whatever that is on that piece and seal her in right there. This is probably one of my favorite seals from the homie. Uh, it's a no blow seal pretty much just melting in the sidewalls to the sidewall without any air pressure. Give her a little touch there to tag it all the way. I've definitely, uh, <laughs> on some earlier pieces, have not tagged them fully and that just, you just have to work so much harder to get them, uh, get it melted in there. Do it right the first time. That's the best way.
Just making sure that's nice and thin. And then it uh, opens up there. And then you can start melting in that side wall using gravity. Make sure you're not building any thick spots. Open it back up if necessary. But this is how you do that real, real clean seal. I absolutely do not like ring seals. I think I've done, I've done plenty of them just by doing bubblers and a whole bunch of random stuff in my production days, but I super prefer not to. If I can get away with putting a down stem through the bottom of a piece, I will do that every time just because that seal is so much smaller and cleaner. Just looks good. And I'm in the business of making it look good. So after putting the perk in, get that bottom nice and closed. I'm going to use a little bit of air pressure with a graphite rod to kind of puff that bottom open. Or not open, but out just a little bit. And that's going to make it so it is more stable than if you just melted it. That way I don't have to worry about the bottom until I touch it next. Because there's still no pressure. Still that open hole on uh, where the down stem is going to go. Or where the joint mount tube. Alright, here's that graphite. Orbit up just a hair. And give it a nice little puff. And you'll see it, you'll see it round out on the bottom. And that's total safety. Don't have to worry about that for a minute. But gonna go right into the, the side wall. I'm gonna patch it. Put a little tube over it and then just melt that in. Weld it in nice and nice and juicy. So it flows and also you won't have to worry about that until you go back to it next. And right after that, without putting it in the kiln, we go straight to the bottom and get that bottom handled. This is when I do my main shaping of my base. So I'm going to get my base perfectly round, um, and then or perfectly flat, and then I will actually pop a little hole in the center. And that's where I hold my piece from to complete it and then it makes the last step very easy all you have to do is just pull off that last little bit and melt it in nice and nice and smooth and you're good to go but just working that bottom down so the bottom's still nice and thick just have to keep getting that center tube glass pulled out Ooh, you can see that lip wrap just shining when it heats up. Yeah, I do like the base of this one. I did all ghost on the base so you can see right through the booty. Good for cleaning, good for uh, checking out the function. Always got to wipe off your pad. If you have anything on your pad, that's going right on the bottom of your piece. And we don't want that. Yep, so you can see now it's nice and smooth. No ripples, nothing. No wobble. And we good to go. Next step is actually going to be uh, opening that bottom and then switching it. It depends on how long it takes. Sometimes I could do it in the same move but your the inside of the piece does start to get cold at that point and that hot uh, flame just shoots right into the piece so sometimes I do let it warm up for a little bit 10 minutes is usually my standard waiting time between moves Pink. and with this you're really not trying to heat anywhere but the center of the base because you don't want to mess up uh, the flatness you just made. So really just focus on that center, some really localized heat. 
And then I actually put a plug in it and that prevents a lot of the flame from going all the way up. You still get it. Yeah, you can still see the perk gets pretty warm, but it doesn't shoot up my handle and through the piece. Kind of localizes the heat to that front area. Oh, and that's looking good. Yeah, this piece already, that prep is just so sparkly. I'm gonna put another chunk in the kiln and get it ready for the funnel. Then we're getting right into switching that bottom. Just basically switching the handle, making it so I can work that other bubble side. Gotta light some Bunsen's, make sure that baby can stay warm. Especially that side is really thick right now. It's just a straight prep on the ghost side. But pretty simple, just a little touch. A little melt in, make sure she stays nice and even. Yeah, one thing I like about my big lathe is it is perfectly straight, so I can switch sides on things pretty easily. When it comes to my little lathe, the little tiny litten that I do smaller pieces on and accessories, one side is completely off, so this is not possible. Alright, looks like we're going to do that nice old suck in now. So pretty much it's all about just getting this front chunk nice and juicy and getting the the wall straight on that final piece happens pretty quickly once you get it warm and even yeah she starts getting sucked down there pretty pretty good on its own this is with using no air pressure so far Yeah, you'll see right here is where I start uh, evening out the top. It's getting her nice and juicy and start sucking. You can see her automatically just start evening out on the inside. Just giving it a little touch. And bam, you can see that it grabbed the bottom there. You really do want to melt that bottom in pretty dang good. At least get that part all juicy. And then you can start popping out that center hole. A little tricky to get that center moving without any of the side walls, especially if it's thin, but this one was nice and easy. Same thing, put the plug in the end, that way you're not heating the whole inside of the piece. And then just get that center evened out. And we're going to put a little post of a tube right there, just so it's easy access for our funnel. Because that seal inside is pretty tricky. getting that other big piece of swan prep opened up and uh, we're actually gonna pull some pieces for I was talking to him and he said that his prep can pull down pretty easily so I was like all right well it's gonna be all my tubing so we're testing that theory right now <laughs> I'm gonna see how easy it pulls down to my surprise it pulled down perfectly even for all the the cane twisted up in there, it, it was smooth as butter. Just trying to find the right size for the uptakes. You don't want them too thick, and you don't definitely don't want them too thin. Thin is almost worse than too thick. But just trying to find that happy medium, getting everything evened out, inconsistent.
Whew, you can definitely do that by hand, but god dang, it's so, so nice on the lathe. So nice. Let's get a nice little straight section there. And we'll go right into that top tab. So this one, it's it's almost the same as doing that internal seal. You really, you could do a cold tack. And I mean, it's a really warm cold tack, but it still needs to be melted in. So you have to go in and do a little bridgy poo, get her nice and secured, and then go into that inside dish. Just trying to melt that tube to the side wall, make sure there's no ripples or anything. Slowly but surely, get her done. You can also kind of shape the inside a little bit too, just making it dip down a little bit more if you blew it out when uh, you were popping that hole open. That InfiniV, once again, one of my favorite tools for making sections. Just pick where you want. Pink. Do that three more times, two more times. Boom. Ching. For all three little goobers. And those are all of our uptakes. And next step is gonna be the funnel. Gonna do the same lip wrap doohickey on the front. Just do that full on coil pot and then uh, open her up. That way the, the line stays nice and thick. You can do smaller lip wraps, but they don't really end up looking how you want them to when everything's blown out on bigger sections. They work really well for small sections, but bigger stuff needs a little bit more glass there. It's easy does it. And then just cap that end and blow her out. Make sure it stays even. And you're really not trying to touch the ghost at all. You really just want to focus right on the center of that uh, Agua Azul. Yeah, this funnel came out really, really clean. I, I do like having transparent colors anywhere you can see the function. So around the perk and uh, the funnel. Just makes it so you can see the function that much better. I mean, we've all seen those completely opaque pieces, which some can be super cool, but I definitely like to see what the heck is going on. Got debridge this baby. And then this is actually ready for all the holes to be popped. So we're going to go into the first one. And uh, sometimes they work out so perfectly to where it gets so thin, you don't have to like pick it open. And that's what happened to the first three of these holes. You just get to use some air pressure and boom that middle membrane goes pop then it's all just melting in the sides making sure everything's even oh yeah juicy give her a measure so I know about how big to make my funnel and then uh, going for the shaping here just pulled off a little bit of that swan prep for the top little splash guard and then all funnel shaping Just trying to get it nice and crispy so it looks super clean but doing time lapses on the lathe is so fun it just looks like super speed Shing. so this is the last hole we're popping and then we're ready to put the funnel on this one, for some reason, uh, I couldn't get it to pop, so I had to 
pull some of that extra glass out. Pretty easy. Just do the magic little tab touch and then break it off. One of my favorite moves. It's I, I like the moves. I like Jesus seals. I like doing these holes. I like doing perk seals. Anything that just has that sort of weirdness factor to it. I mean, it's not like metal. It's not like wood. Glass is super unique in how it moves. Yeah, what other shapes can you do that to? Besides like plastic, you know. I guess a 3D printer maybe, but that's completely different. It's just, it blows my mind how soft glass can get, even though it is so hard when it's cooled down. Yeah, it can break, but if you've ever seen the Prince Rupert's drop on like a hydraulic press, those that shit can get so much pressure before it does anything. I've seen it break the hydraulic press before it breaks the Prince Rupert's drop. All right, just getting that funnel on. Nice and easy, that was like lightning speed. And uh, we're gonna do the uptakes. This is how I shape my uptakes. Just give it a nice little bend. Blow while you bend so you keep that, that wall weight. And I actually have a little, uh, I measure for every piece, but usually they all end up being around the same. So I can use the same little piece of cardboard, but I just match up all my uptakes to to look like that. Make sure you pop a little air pressure hole so you can just go and tear off the end there. Then open that back up and that's actually where you're going to connect it to the piece. So this one has to be nice and clean. Making sure we're on. Yeah, just it's a really easy way to keep them all consistent and give them all a very similar bend right off the bat. So when I'm going through and reshaping them after I put them on there, they're already all, all the way there. You just have to do a little bit of the evening out of tubing and maybe move it a little bit, but really not much at all. Got to find the Sofietta. Sofietta is a little tool that you use to blow Yep, just like this. So I'm blowing out that other end. When you have no air pressure and you have a hole, you can use it to to puff stuff out a little bit. So there's the collab and all its glory so far. You can really see that lip wrap on the top, how, how popping it is just because of the that extra thickness. Whew. Getting ready to do my favorite seal. The Jesus seals are so fun. Such a cool thing. So this all happens relatively quickly. I try to make it uh, make it fast. So rewarm that up. Then we're gonna grab the uptake out of the kiln and go straight for it. So you want this seal to be very very clean. You want to get both sides nice and hot. So when you touch and pull and puff, that it actually goes completely even. Because I spend the time to do the Jesus seal to bridge it together. And once that Jesus seal membrane just pops and I just get it nice to where it's not going to crack, then I go immediately right back into that bottom and fix that seal. Sometimes it goes good. Other times, you know, there'll be little things, but little folds in it. But usually it's, it's just evening out the wall weight. So you can't see here, but on the inside of those two tubes touching, there's a tiny membrane. And when you heat one side, it actually keeps thinning out that membrane until you can blow it and then pop it on one side. And then you just go in and melt in the others, other sides, get that membrane to fully disappear and melt into the sidewall, and you have an open tube. So the rest, that's all that I use for the hand torch on that one. Maybe a little bit here and there evening it out, but really it's all just gravity and getting her all to flow together. And 
I try to make the angle right. I try to make it all look like it's pretty seamless. Nice and juicy. Oh, yeah. She's looking good now. Back to the lid, making some parts. I'm actually shaping out the mouthpiece here. We did ghost on the top for the Maria and then a little bit of swan prep for the actual tube. And then the same thing for the ground joint so it matches. Nice little piece of ghost and then, uh, oh, this is putting on that Millie. Woohoo, just slap that swan Millie on top. And what's not shown is I pulled pieces for the joint mount tube. There's all the uptakes on. Oof, yeah. This one functions hard. There's a function video at the beginning of this video. And ooh la la. What a juicy one. Can't wait to see some terps go through her. Just getting that joint mount, bridge, all prepped, and then just got to melt it into the piece. You can really start to see the whole composition start to come together. Pretty sure my GoPro died. Not exactly sure what happened, but I missed the joint mount tube going on, so... It's just me prepping it and then it's going to be like magic. <laughs> I wish glass blowing was all like that. Just open the kiln and the piece is finished. Woo! Yep, just get that prepped. Make sure it's nice and even. Measure your joint mount tube. Make sure it's perfect. There's the joint mount tube, and there it is on. <laughs> Magic. Gotta love it. So after I have that joint mount tube on there, it's perfect to put a little bridge on there to get ready for the mouthpiece. Kind of size up the mouthpiece. I get it, uh, or not to size up, but to, just to find where I'm putting the mouthpiece. That little piece of glass helps a lot to just make it even gives you a little guide a guide rod is what I'll call it gotta plug that baby she's got one in I love it the kiln was full of parts and now it's empty just checking the alignment on that beauty Wiping all the, every time you see me wipe it, I'm actually wiping kiln dust off. So when you put it in the kiln, I mean, it's it's just like touching anything dirty. There's going to be little pieces of, of kiln ceramic all over it. And if you melt those in, yeah, they definitely stay there. So you don't, you always want to wipe them off first. Oh yeah, look at that alignment. Hello. Put a little bridge on there. Got to do it pretty quick because you don't want that mouthpiece to get cold. Just warming it up a little bit before I go into it and just melt that baby in. I do a combination of hand torch and uh, big torch to melt it in just depending on, on what I need. Oh yeah, that one looks good. There's one part left. Rip off that bridge, get it ready for the ground joint. Just reduce that joint mount tube a little bit, just so it uh, isn't that tall. <laughs> Always try to make it as close to the bridge as possible. Just to keep it nice and clean. 
Man, I love the way these exos look. It's always so fun towards the end of the piece building it, because it's like, whew, you're really working on something now. It's not just parts and pieces. Oh yeah, she's looking good. That ghost with that swan prep. Looks pretty killer. Alright, we're all prepped to go. We're gonna slap that ground joint on. The ground joint looks super cool with this one prep. Nice little touch and then straight to alignment. Just making sure she's on with the mouthpiece, on with the joint mount tube, and that the angle's nice. She's not too dipped or anything. I have a little level that I do check pieces afterwards, but not usually while I'm making them. They're pretty easy to adjust if needed, but try to do it right the first time. Oh yeah, and that's the finished composition. Now we just have to clean a few things up. My, The sketchiest step, in my opinion, if your piece is good, then it's fine. But sketchiest step is taking the, the sodium flare off. Whenever you do seals, there's just a little white haze um, that gets left on the glass if it's improperly heated. And my seals take so long sometimes that it just gets everywhere. So you just got to go over real quick, do a little flash, take all the sodium flare off. It's pretty unavoidable for some pieces, even if you properly heat them. And then getting the mouthpiece all ready. I prefer a perfectly flat mouthpiece. I don't like having any bumps or yeah, anything like that. So I always make it nice and perfect. Pretty simple, just get it flat. And once you have it flat, you can just use air pressure and pop out that center. I don't like them to be too big either. I like them to be a nice like sipper size. So it's nice and comfortable for your lips. And it just looks so clean. So the last step is the little poker. Pink. And that just makes that center. If I get it a little wonky or anything, it just makes it perfectly round. So now we have a nice little perfect hole. Take out that plug and we're we're taking her off. One more little kiln cycle. But there's the piece. I wish at this point we could just put water in it. <laughs> we have to wait for it to cool down. But oh, I get so jazzed on them. I just want to use it. <laughs> Grab the nice barbecue tongs there. And really focusing just on that center. You don't want to hit the outside hardly at all because the outside is already perfect. So you really just got to get that center piece pulled out. And you do have to switch sides from time to time. If you work it all in on one side, it's going to droop to one side. So every so often you got to just switch hands, switch sides. Make sure she's juicy. Flatten that bottom. Get it nice and good, and we're good to go, baby. Just a little warming from the graphite. And then the last time, we're walking her to the kiln. Big shout out to Swan Glass for trusting me with this prep. Allowing me to make this beautiful heater out of it. And there she goes to sleep. Good night, my little angel. And there's the finished product. I just want to thank y'all so much for watching me create this art piece. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. I love y'all. Stay beautiful, Slugger Squad.